Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you my first impressions plus on feet video of the brand new Under Armour Clutch Fit Force 2.0. Now inside the box, they do include an extra set of laces to go along with the black ones already on the shoes. The extra set of laces are kind of unusual in that one side of the lace is white, the other side is red. We're gonna take a look at these laces on the shoes a little bit later in the video, so stick around for that if you're interested. Other than that, all you're gonna find inside the box, as you can see, are the shoes themselves. So I'll get these guys out of the box really quickly and we'll take a closer look at the new Clutch Fit Force 2.0 from Under Armour. Now I feel like every time I make a video on a pair of Under Armour shoes, I'm always talking about how underrated that particular shoe is and how underrated Under Armour is as a soccer brand. And I'm gonna continue to say that as long as these things remain unpopular because there's absolutely no reason for it. Under Armour is producing some really good stuff. The original Clutch Fit Force was a very unique, interesting shoe that performed extremely well and offered a fit and feel that really you couldn't get from any other shoe. And the Clutch Fit Force 2.0 is essentially an evolution of that first model where they've made some tweaks to the upper, the insole, as well as just the general fit of the shoe while maintaining the same sole plate and stud pattern. So personally, I'm really excited about these. In today's video, we're of course going to take a closer look at the overall appearance of the shoe, talk about the new graphics, go over the tech specs, uh, talk about the way these things fit and feel on feet, as well as take a look at the weight as well. So if you are interested in learning more about the new Clutch Fit Force 2.0, please stick around and watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $200 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. To start things off, let's talk about performance. Now there are two main elements that I really liked about the original Clutch Fit. The first element being the slightly elasticated upper, which made for a very interesting fit and feel on feet. Uh, and two, I really like the amount of underfoot cushioning that the shoe provided. It was very substantial for a soccer shoe, which is kind of unusual, but really, really comfortable. So I really like those two elements in particular about the original. With the Clutch Fit Force 2.0, they've maintained those same elements, but tweaked them a little bit, which is what I'm going to point out for you right now. Now, the upper is what they call a Travella synthetic. It's a two-way stretch microfiber, and on the Clutch Fit 2.0, it's a little bit different in that one, the material itself itself is slightly thinner. Uh, you can see the side profile right here and I actually have the original clutch fit here. So you can see the side profile definitely thicker on the original versus the 2.0 model. So that's not necessarily a good or bad thing, but I think most people would want it to be a little thinner. Given this style of soccer shoe, it is a thinner synthetic from the get go. So going a little bit thinner with the 2.0 model, I don't think anyone's going to complain about that. Uh, but what's interesting about how this works is that base Travella synthetic is actually stretchy. It'll stretch in all directions. So uh, uh, that would make for a very comfortable fit because you'll notice that when you put the shoe on and tie the laces tight, it stretches around your foot. The tighter you tie the laces, the more the upper is gonna stretch and kind of not necessarily squeeze your foot, but wrap your foot in such a way that only an elasticated material would be able to achieve. So it's a one-to-one -one fit, but because it has that slight ability to stretch, it doesn't feel like it's squeezing your foot, uh, which is comfortable and kind of unique feeling all at the same time. Now, obviously that would make for a not very responsive shoe. It doesn't lack, it would lack structure. So in order to compensate for that, they've implemented this pattern that you see on the outside. That pattern is not just for looks, it's actually an element, a support element that is kind of built into the all-in-one synthetic material. So this particular material on the outside is a 3D rubberized kind of webbing. So this pattern is actually a thin layer of rubber that's fused to the top layer of that Travella synthetic, which allows for a two-way stretch system, meaning that when you put pressure on the shoe, it's gonna stretch this way. So again, when you pull the laces tight, the sides of the shoe are gonna pull up a little bit and really hug your foot nice and tightly, uh, but still maintaining a nice kind of comfortable fit because it's slightly elasticated. Even if your foot doesn't perfectly match the shape of the actual shoe and the shape of the upper, it kind of just stretches around it, giving you kind of a more custom feel, which is really, really unique and something you're only gonna get from the Clutch Fit line from Under Armour. So it's gonna stretch that way, but because of this pattern they've implemented, it's not going to stretch this way. So if I try to pull it apart, which is the type of force that you're gonna feel when you're making those quick cuts and changes of direction, it's gonna stay nice and 
and solid and give you that good responsive feel. Now I'm gonna say that with the original clutch fit, the responsiveness that it provided was not great. There definitely was some rollover and some movement in the upper when enough force is applied to the side of the shoe. And you can see the pattern they've implemented here uh, varies in size and varies in kind of uh, how dense the pattern is uh, depending on where it is on the, sh on the actual shoe. So it's kind of an hourglass shape, as you guys can see, that gets more spread out across the top and tighter across the bottom. Whereas on the Clutch Fit 2.0, you can see that the pattern is pretty consistent all the way around. And uh, the, the shape has gone from an hourglass into more of like a dumbbell shape with little reinforcements in between. So you're gonna notice that while this upper is thinner and feels more flexible um, on foot, it's more reinforced and more structured overall. So the responsiveness of this shoe should be an improvement over the original Clutch Fit Force, which is a definite nice thing to see. And uh, that's really the biggest design difference when you're coming from the original model to the 2.0. The laces still run down the middle, so you have a pretty traditional type of fit and feel in that regard. And another element in regards to touch and just the feel of the upper that you're really gonna notice with the Clutch Fit line is the fact that all of this material printed on top is rubberized so you're getting that extra grip on the ball that uh, not many shoes are providing anymore if I had to compare it to something I suppose it would be something like a Predator Instinct although that, although that shoe is far grippier and has more bulk to it just because the rubber elements are a lot thicker this is a very low profile rubber that you feel the texture to the touch but against the ball it pretty it feels very consistent in terms of the amount of grip that the upper is actually providing. So it's not sticky like what you're gonna get from the Predator Instinct, but it definitely provides more grip on the ball than something like a Nike Mercurial Vapor 10 or uh, an Adidas X15.1 would provide. So it's kind of in between those two shoes in terms of outright grip. Um, but like I said, the thickness, these are a little bit thinner than the original. Still not the thinnest shoe around. I would kind of compare it to maybe something like uh, the X15.1, I guess, would be a good example in that it's a thin shoe, but it does have some slight kind of cushion quality to the actual material itself. Uh, the tongue is uh, thin, but it has some memory foam inserts. You can see I removed the laces here so you can see. So you have a memory foam insert right here going across the top of the foot, and then one here kind of lower towards the bottom, which is really, really nice. On the inside, just so you guys can see exactly what's going on here, uh, you can see the back of that Travella is synthetic, completely exposed through the midfoot. So it's this very soft, almost synthetic suede-like material. And then in the forefoot area, there's an extra layer of uh, kind of material lining. It's like a tightly woven mesh, uh, just again for extra reinforcement in the forefoot area, just to make sure that the shoe's not rolling over or anything like that. Uh, but like I said, the most, the majority of the stretch you're gonna feel in the shoe is through the midfoot where they haven't reinforced it whatsoever, other than what this rubberized uh, kind of webbing is providing on the outside. As far as the back of the shoe is concerned, it is of course a low cut shoe as most soccer shoes are, but they've gone to an internal heel counter as opposed to an external one that we saw on the original Clutch Fit. I really like the external heel counter. I just like external heel counters in general. So I'm a little bit disappointed that they took it away here on the 2.0 model. But at the same time, I don't really have any issues with them taking it away because uh, internal heel counters pretty much for the most part get the exact same job done. But as you guys can see, the general shape and cut of the shoe is absolutely the same between the two models, despite the heel counter being eliminated. So inside the heel liner, it's a smooth synthetic leather material with lots of padding. It's very heavily padded back here. So step in comfort is not gonna be an issue whatsoever. The insole, that's fully removable, just like it was on the previous model, but it's now made from their new charged foam as opposed to being a combination of 4D foam and micro G. So the main difference you're gonna find here is that this foam is a little bit firmer than what you found on the previous. What I really liked about the previous Clutch Fit is just the amount of underfoot cushioning that it provided. Uh, this insole, I would say, is also a little bit thinner, but with that original Clutch Fit, it was almost like running in a pair of running shoes in terms of how much cushioning that that insole provided. Definitely the most impressive insole of any soccer shoe on the market. So I'm really curious to try out this new Charge Foam. I haven't tried it on any of their running shoes or training models or basketball models because I know it has been implemented on quite a few different shoes at this point from Under Armour. Uh, but like I said, it feels similar to Micro G, but maybe just a little bit firmer. I know the idea is that 
It's supposed to be more of an adaptive foam where depending on the situation, it's gonna be more plush or more responsive. Uh, but again, until you actually use it, it's really, really hard to say. Um, as far as the lining is concerned, it does have this kind of zigzag texturing as you guys can see, uh, but no actual liner material. It's just straight up foam, which I really, really like. That's something that they have maintained from the previous model as well. And I just find that the foam grips your socks pretty well and it makes for less wear in the insole. There's nothing to wear off because it's just straight up foam. So that's a really nice feature. And again, it has some really good thickness to it as you guys can see here by the side profile. Moving on to the bottom of the shoe, this remains completely unchanged coming from the original clutch fit, which did feature different sole plate variations depending on which colorway you got. Later colorways had different sole plates for some reason, uh, but this one goes back to the original colorway, which is what I have right here. Exact same sole plate and stud pattern as you guys can see. Kind of has this kind of bone shape, uh, foot bone shape to it in terms of the graphic, but really no impact on performance. It's made from a thicker plastic material that does have some really good flexibility to it. And that's something you're really gonna notice with the clutch fit line is that they're very, very flexible with a stud pattern that is uh, kind of conical shaped studs are kind of bladed as well. It's almost like an oval shape, so it's in between. Uh, they're fairly large, so they don't dig into the ground particularly well, especially if it's a little harder. But on nice natural grass fields, the traction is pretty good. No major complaints there whatsoever. Uh, and for most people, it definitely will get the job done. It's not super aggressive, uh, but it certainly isn't bad by any means. It, it gets the job done. That's really the best way to describe it. So that's pretty much it in terms of tech specs and just running down all the differences between the Clutch Fit and the Clutch Fit 2.0 from Under Armour. I think it's a nice improvement. They've made some subtle tweaks here and also made some changes that I think are gonna have a big impact on the overall feel and performance of this shoe. So with that being said, let's move on to a quick weigh-in so we can see how lightweight these guys are. As far as weight is concerned, I thought we'd compare the original Clutch Fit Force to the Clutch Fit Force 2.0 to see if there's any weight difference between the two. So keep in mind, we're gonna be weighing both of these shoes for you today in real time using this scale, both the exact same size 9.5 US. So this is a very fair comparison. We'll start off with the original clutch fit, throw it on the scale, and you can see that they weigh in at eight ounces exactly, the equivalent of 227 grams. So we'll change the scale back to ounces, pull these off, remember those numbers, and we'll throw on the 2.0 model. And you can see that they weigh in at 7.75 ounces, the equivalent of 220 grams. So you're talking about a weight difference of 0.25 ounces, which in my opinion is fairly insignificant. You're not gonna notice a major weight difference between these two shoes, but I will say that the 2.0 model does fit a little bit better, which does make them feel slightly lighter on your feet. Uh, that's pretty much the same weight range as something like an Adidas X 15.1, a Messi 15.1 as well. So again, these are by no means heavy, or are they, are they as light as something like a Nike Mercurial Vapor 10? Absolutely not. But if you're looking for that lightweight feel, but at the same time a shoe that is also very comfortable and feels pretty solid on your feet, that's exactly what you're gonna get here with the Clutch Fit Force 2.0. As far as aesthetics go, I really like the look of the new Clutch Fit 2.0. I was a fan of the original, especially in the later colorways that they came out with, but the 2.0 model, in my opinion, just looks more tough. That's the best way I can describe it. I really like the big Under Armour logo as opposed to the very small one. So it's kind of the exact opposite in comparison to the original in that regard. And I just like that the pattern itself is bigger. It gives the shoe a very modern kind of structured look, which is kind of what this design is supposed to provide. Uh, I threw in the extra laces, as you guys can see, which again, one side is red, the other side is white. So as you lace them up, it kind of crisscrosses. I don't love how they look and they're kind of thick and made from this really really rough nylon material, kind of unusual. Uh, I much prefer the look of the black ones, but nonetheless, it's definitely a pretty cool looking shoe. Um, I like this particular colorway. This is the launch one being white, black, and red. I know a lot of people are probably gonna compare the colorway to that of the launch color of the Legend 6. Nobody's copying anybody here, guys. The combination of white, black, and an accent color is not particularly original, so not too surprising that we see it on two shoes at the same time, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but again, I really like the look of the white and black with the slight red detailing in the outline of the actual Under Armour logo and the Forest logo there on the tongue. You also have the red Clutch Fit branding there at the back. And then the sole plate has a combination of the white, black, and red as well. So overall, I think it's a pretty cool looking shoe. Let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comment section. Do you like how these look? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the on-feet portion of the video so we can get a better idea as to how these shoes fit 
and of course what the sizing is like. All right, so here is a look at the Clutch Fit Force 2.0s on feet. On my left foot, I have the stock black laces that come with the shoes. And on my right foot, I have a pair of white and black grid pattern SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. You'll find a direct link to that website down below in the description of this video. Now, in terms of how these things fit and feel on feet, they are very, very comfortable from the get-go, similar to the original Clutch Fit Force. There's not much of a break in time with this material, mainly because it's stretchy and elasticated from the start. So you put them on your feet, they fit pretty snug, but then when you pull the laces tight, the shoe kind of wraps your foot and, and hugs it in such a way that no other shoe can because there aren't any other shoes with elasticated uppers. It's a really unusual sensation when you're lacing them up, but one that once you're done feels really, really good. You get this nice, tight, secure one-to-one -one fit. And that's probably one of the other big differences coming from the Clutch Fit 1 to the Clutch Fit 2.0 is the shape of the shoe. They've tweaked it to make it a little bit less wide, mainly in the forefoot and toe box area. They just kind of lowered the volume a little bit, which was one of my minor complaints with the original. I just thought the forefoot area was a little bit too wide. This one is, like I said, slightly more snug, which eliminates a lot of that extra dead space that you had in the original, making these fit pretty much perfect, at least for me personally. So uh, it's a tighter fitting shoe, but they don't feel like they're squeezing your foot or they don't feel like your foot is trapped inside the shoe in any way, because like I said, it's elasticated. It kind of has that ability to stretch around your foot but not in a way that feels restrictive at all which again really really hard to describe but trust me when I say that they're very very comfortable shoes the charge foam insole is also worth mentioning that it's not as heavily kind of cushioned feeling as the micro g40 foam combo that you had on the original clutch fit feels a little bit firmer to me uh, but the cushioning is still well above average for a pair of soccer shoes in general so if underfoot cushioning is something that you value the clutch fit whether it's the one or the 2.0, definitely worth a look because they're very comfortable shoes. The flexibility of this upper is great. Like I said, they're good to go from right out of the box. Pretty much no break in time required. Uh, it's just a matter of getting used to how they feel, I suppose. As far as width is concerned, they're gonna be suitable for just about anybody. While it is a tighter fitting shoe once laced up, they've got some good width. So even if you do have wider foot type, because the upper is elasticated, you're unlikely to have too many issues with the width of the shoe. So like I said, they are gonna be suitable for most people. And as far as sizing is concerned, just like the original Clutch Fit and Under Armour shoes in general, they run about a half size small. So instead of going for my usual size nine, I bumped it up to a 9.5 and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going half size up in order to achieve the best possible fit. All right guys, that is it for my first impressions of the Under Armour Clutch Fit Force 2.0. Expect to see more content on the new Clutch Fit in the near future on my channel. So look forward to that if you are at all interested in more info on these guys. In the meantime, if you are interested in a pair or just wanna see more pictures, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find the high quality images of this exact pair that I took myself. That'll give you a better idea as to how these actually do look in person. And you'll also find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $200 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. If you have any questions at all regarding the Clutch Fit Force 2.0, Leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. All my social media information is also linked down below in the description. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.